are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. Good. So we're doing the law of signs today. Yeah. Okay. Just out of curiosity, have you covered the ambiguous case of the law of signs? Is it the ASS one? Yeah. Uh, no, we're doing that tomorrow. Okay. That's the only truly difficult part of the law of signs. Everything we're going to do uh, today okay. is, is relatively easy. Okay. So, you want to just start at one here? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the first variable? We've got three variables. We're trying to figure out A, B, and angle alpha. Which one can we figure out almost immediately? Uh, angle alpha. Okay. So, alpha equals what? It would be... It would be 40. Okay. So, now, using the law of signs, in order to use the law of signs, the fundamental thing you look for is an angle and an opposite side length. As long as you can find that, then you can use the law of signs, because the law of signs says that that ratio is the same, regardless. In other words, the sine of 95 degrees divided by 5 has to be the same ratio as the sine of 45 degrees divided by B. And that's All the right. same ratio as the sine of alpha, which is 40 degrees, divided by A. And it's important to know that this... You can do this either way. You can also, in other words, that's, that's, I didn't mean to put an equal sign there, but you can use the law of signs that way, or you can use the law of signs that way. In other words, the trig function doesn't always have to be the numerator. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So... What's the first thing we want to solve for here? We can do the 45 degrees, so B. Can be an equation. Usually when you're doing math and you figure out the problem and you're setting it up, you want to come up with an equation that you can solve. So sine of 40 or 95 degrees over five. Yeah, I like to start on the left side with both knowns. That's the ratio we're looking for. Equals what? Sine of 45 to B. Okay, how do we solve that? Cross multiply. Okay. So B equals this quantity divided by sine of 95. Do you have your calculator? Uh, yeah. Why don't you do this? Presuming you want numerical answers, not just conceptual understandings here. Yeah. Sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 95 is close to 1. Yeah, it's it says 3.55. Okay. And now a useful step is to see if that makes sense. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. In other words, it does relative to this 5. We know that in any triangle, the shortest side is opposite the shortest angle, and the longest side is opposite the biggest angle. So at least we're in the ballpark. 
Okay, in other words, if 5 is opposite 95 degrees, then it makes sense that 3.55 would be opposite 45 degrees. Now, how do we, we've solved for alpha, that's 40. So, A better come in less than 3.55. How do we solve for A? Can't we just do, instead of sine of, uh, just instead of sine of 45, just put sine of 40? Uh huh? Over A. So, A is going to be 5 sine of 40 divided by sine of 95. And what's that number? 3.23. Okay, good. Perfect. It should be a little bit less than 3.55, and it is. It's the first thing we have to do on two. Find the, the um, gamma. Good. What's gamma equal to? 95. Now what? Um, then you, it's just... Um, sine of 95 over 4. Is equal to sine of 40 over B. Okay, which is also equal to... Sine of 45, say. Uh-huh, over A. In other words, this part will allow us to solve for B because there's only one unknown there. And then once we solve for B, we'll be able to solve for A because that'll be the only unknown in that part. Okay. Let's go on. I'm going to presume you know how to do the calculator arithmetic part. So yeah. there's no real reason we should waste time doing that. Let's make sure you get them all set up correctly. Have you had the law of cosines yet? No. Okay. I think that's like Thursday. The law of cosines, just in advance, is if I had a triangle like this, notice that I have three pieces of information, but I do not have a side opposite angle relationship. So there's no way I'm going to be able to solve that triangle using the law of sines, at least not off the get-go. And that's where the law of cosines comes in. The law of cosines allows you to solve these kind of triangles or five, six whenever you have all three sides and you don't know any of the angles. That's a law of cosines problem also. Okay. So, and both, every time you have to use the law of cosines, it's only the first step. You always have to finish it with the law of sines. So the law of sines is used in all cases. But the first step is the law of cosines when you have, in other words, if you don't have that critical side opposite angle relationship, then you can't use the law of sines. Um, okay. I don't know what that is there, but I don't care. What is that angle? Uh, beta. What is it, though? What numerical? Uh, 45 degrees. Okay. Now, in order to solve, is that alpha there? Yeah. Or A and C? 
So what's the equation that would allow us to solve for everything here? Which sine of A and C. Sine of 45 over 3 to, um, equals sine of 50 to A equals sine of 85 to C. All right. There's nothing in tonight's homework that's going to give you any trouble whatsoever. At, nor should it. Um, in other words, these are pretty easy problems. The law of signs is very straightforward. Let me just look at the second page here. Is there anything on the second page that's not straightforward? Uh, it, we're also doing 9, 10, 11, and that's, that stuff's pretty, that stuff, I yeah, that's all straightforward. that's going to give you a problem. So let me give you a head start on the ambiguous case of the law of signs. Right. There is angle side side, or if you like, side side angle. Now, notice that this does not prove congruency. Side side angle. You got to have side angle side or side side side. Right? Yeah. Well, and the reason is, is that occasionally you will come across dimensions where I can actually draw two different triangles based on these dimensions. And that is this one here, but I can also draw. This one here. And in both cases, the sides are 8, 10, and the angle is 30 degrees. So there's two possible triangles that result if I say to you, that I have a triangle who has an angle of 30 degrees and in two successive sides of 10 and 8, what solve that triangle? Well, you have two solutions. You have this solution, the normal looking one, and then you occasionally will have that solution. So let me show you on how to get a handle on this. Give me the equation that would apply here? Could it be uh, sine of 30 is over 8 is to, um, sine of C to 10. Okay, now let's try to solve that. So we have the sine of C equals 10 over 8 times 1 half, that's 10 over 16, that's 5 eighths. Okay? You with yeah. me? Mm -hmm. Now, what is C equal to? In other words, what's the inverse sine of 5 eighths? Thirty-eight point six eight. I'm going to round it off to thirty-eight degrees. Okay. Right. Now, notice that there's actually two answers to that question. You gave me the first quadrant answer, and that answer would tell me that that's thirty. That's thirty-eight. And this is going to be 112. Okay? But remember that in trig, sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. So what's the second quadrant answer? 128. 142. 
Are you sure? So 38 degrees? Yeah. And then when you just add to 90? Be, they have to be supplementary. They have to add oh. 90. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, yeah. here's where you ask the question, can I have a triangle that has a 30-degree angle and a 142-degree angle? Does that triangle work? Yeah. Yes, barely. it does. Barely, but that's all we need is barely. In other words, if that's 142 degrees, then this one is 8 degrees, which means that that is one of the solutions. In other words, whenever you're solving using the law of signs where you potentially can have an ambiguous case of the law of signs, then when you solve for C, you need both the first quadrant and the second quadrant. You take the second quadrant answer, you add it to the only known angle in our triangle, which is 30 degrees. If it's less than 180, then you got room for the third angle. And that's one of the solutions. All right. The other solution is clearly 38 degrees. In other words, if that's 38, then that's 112. So both of the solutions I have are perfectly acceptable. In other words, if I tell you that I have angle A is 30 degrees, side C is 10, side A is 8, solve that triangle, you can. You can come up with two possible solutions, and this is why it's called the ambiguous case of the law of signs, because there's two possible triangles. Now, where do you have to be on the alert for this? Whenever the, the angle that they give you is less than 90 degrees. If it's 90 degrees or more, then it's impossible to have the ambiguous case. And that's why if you have a right triangle, is all you need is that side and the hypotenuse. And that's the hypotenuse HL congruency test. And the reason it works, notice we still have angle side side or side side angle. But as long as this is 90 degrees or greater, that actually does prove congruency. And it's not, it turns out that it's not whenever that's less than 90 degrees that you're going to have two, two, two answers. In other words, if I made this, let's make that angle 80 degrees. Okay? Now well, let's solve it. What do you get for sine of C equals, it's no longer 5 eighths. In other words, I've got to show you the case where you don't have the ambiguous case, and you don't know until you solve it. So what do you get for the sine of C here? 5 fourths times the sine of 80 degrees. I got 1.23. Ah, that tells us something. What does it tell us? That's impossible. Yeah. Okay, so I can't even have that kind of triangle. I can't have 8 opposite an 80 degree angle. Let's make it 60. Now solve it. I got 1.8 or 1.08. I think my calculator is in the wrong. You might be in the wrong um, mode. Um, make sure you're in degree mode. You have a TI 84? No, TI Inspire. Okay. Uh, that's even harder to make sure you're in the right mode. That's about the hardest thing there is to do on that calculator is understand which mode you're in. That's the only thing I hate about that calculator. 
for one thing, they should tell you. They should always show you what mode you're in when they give you their answers, and they don't. It says I'm in degree mode, but that does not seem right. What's the sine of 60 degrees? It's square root of 3 over 2. And I'm multiplying that by 5 over 4. Yeah, I'm definitely in the wrong mode because... Yeah, because that number is less than 1. In other words, square root of 3 is 1.7. So that's 8.5... Oh, oh, no, that is over 1. No, you, you got it right. Hold, okay, let's keep going down. Let's put in 45 degrees. And it's important that I show you what happens here. It, once we get up to it in a certain angle, we no longer have the ambiguous case of the law of sines. And I want to show you why we know that. So what's the answer to the sine of C when I use sine of 45 times 5? Yeah. 0.88. 0.88? Yeah. Okay. Now, what is angle C? What are both angles? What's one of them? One, what, uh, one your calculator is going to give you. Okay, I think my calculator is definitely in the wrong mode because I got point zero one when I put. Oh no, I put the wrong the inverse, type of sign. You want to take the inverse sine of point eight eight. Yeah, I, 62 degrees. Okay. Now, what's the supplementary angle? In other words, there's actually two angles, two answers for that. Uh, 118 degrees. Okay. Is that a possible answer? Yes. Yeah, as long as this plus this does not exceed 180, then it's a legitimate answer, okay? It just occurred to me that I'm going the wrong way with these angles. Let's make that 20 degrees. In other words, I'm trying to find the case where we do not have the ambiguous case. What's the sine of C equal to when that's 20 degrees? 0.43. And what is the inverse sine of 0.43? Ah, that's going to work also. Ah, I can't think of a case. 25 degrees. 25, so the supplementary is 155 and that plus that is still less than 180. Trust me when I tell you that occasionally you're going to find an angle, even if it's less than 90, where when you find the supplementary answer, it plus that angle is greater than 180, in which case that's not a solution. You throw it out. And then you don't have the ambiguous case. You only have one answer. Okay? So, yeah. the, and, you know, there's all kinds of ways of teaching about the ambiguous case of the law of signs. And some are re really hard. They're, they make you memorize all kinds of strange things. And... It wasn't until I found this method that I realized this was by far the best method of determining it. In other words, whenever you solve a triangle where you're looking at side-side angle, and that angle is less than 90 degrees, make sure that when you solve for that first angle, C, that you get both your primary answer, which is the one your calculator gives you, but you also need the second quadrant answer. And then right. compare your second quadrant answer to the only known angle 
and see if it exceeds 180. If it does, it's not a possible answer. If it doesn't, it is. Okay. Now, there's notice right. in these two triangles here, that side is still 10 and that side is still 8. Both of those triangles are 30 degrees, 10, 8. In other words, they have the same side-side angle, but they're not congruent. And that's why side-side angle does not prove congruency. Right. It does if the angle is greater than or equal to 90. And that's, that's kind of one thing I'm a little surprised. Your geometry book doesn't, doesn't tell you. It tells you the HL postulate. You know, if you have a right triangle and you have the hypotenuse and one of the sides are congruent, then you have congruent triangles. But it doesn't tell you that if you have any kind of an obtuse triangle like that, okay, if, if I know B and I know A and I know uh, angle, this one right here, uh, that proves congruency. Even though it is side-side angle, it proves congruency because the angle is 90 degrees or greater. In other words, if I knew another B, another A, and another B, there's only one other triangle that I can draw that is congruent to that. It looks exactly the same. All right. But they don't have a separate postulate for that. And that bothers me a little bit because I've run into numerous problems in your book that have triangles that are side-side angle and the angle is bigger than 90 degrees and they ask you to prove it and state the postulate. And uh, that's hard to do because your book does not state that side-side angle works when the angle is greater than 90 degrees and it really should. All right, hopefully that will give you a head start on the ambiguous case of the law of signs. And then, of course, the next thing up is the law of cosines. And that's just memorizing what the law of cosines is. And that's when you do not have, in other words, you still have three pieces of information, but you do not have a side opposite an angle. All right. In other words, you have this, maybe you have that. You cannot solve that triangle with the law of sines, but you can solve it with the law of cosines. And the law of cosines is always only the first step. You have to finish it using the law of sines. So whenever you start a problem using the law of cosines, know that one of the steps is using the law of sines to finish it. I'm going to be able to use the law of cosines to figure out this side. Okay? Yeah. Once I figured out that side, now I have a side opposite angle relationship, and I can figure out this angle uh, based on the law of sines. So you always end up having to use the law of sines and solving every triangle. It's just some of them you start out using the law of cosine. Mitch, right. have a good week. I will talk to you next week. All right. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you.